You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another very interesting episode of Ask Drone You. As we enter the holiday season, we would like to wish you and your family a happy Thanksgiving from everyone here at the Drone U flight crew. Also, as you know, it's Black Friday, which has already started, and we've got a lot of deals going on. And in fact, you can grab an annual membership, which is access to over three dozen courses for $347 a month. Now, here's the, uh, here's the new cup that we're sending out to our new annual members. And it's got something very important on it. We'll talk about it later, but it's thumbs up buttercup. <laughs> and if you've attended Flight Mastery, you know exactly what I am talking about. But I've got a very special guest today, Steve Della Santos. He is our new producer, and he was a drone pilot before he came to Drone U, but then has worked his way up here at Drone U to now be the producer. And I have Steve on the show because I think he's he's just a perfect representation of many of you, these intermediate pilots who are getting going and really, uh, really don't know what they don't know. And that's kind of what we're here to talk about is how Steve has garnished value essentially from being here at DroneU. But Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks, Paul. Good to be here. I know you're not normally used to being uh, on camera. (laughs) You're uh, normally behind the cameras. Well, yeah, my mom says I have a face for radio. Oh, so. <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but Steve, I know uh, in an effort to kind of get in this, I know yesterday you, uh, everyone had left the office, which uh, Steve normally stays pretty late, to be honest, and uh, very hard worker. But you, everyone left the office yesterday and you had gone flying out at the field. Is that right? Yep. Yep. And so you went out to the field and there was another hobby pilot, but he was flying an RC helicopter, not necessarily a drone, right? That's true. Yes. And so Steve, in a total uh, contrast to myself, you actually asked him if you could kind of share the field with him. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yep. He was standing right in the middle of it, so I couldn't really uh, fly around him or through him or anything like that, so I figured I'd just ask. Well, the, I think that was very nice of you, <laughs> something I probably would not do, but uh, <laughs> to showcase the contrast. Um, but what was really interesting is that, you know, you said that he was like, yeah, I, I'm essentially almost done flying, but you said he asked to watch you fly. That's right. There was, yeah, this guy out here with his uh, little mini RC and and I told him I just wanted to get some stick time on the drone, and he was very interested in that because he had never really seen up close someone fly and launch, and uh, he kind of wanted just to check it out. He thought it was a good opportunity. So as soon as he used his last battery, I set my stuff up and and proceeded to do my pre-flight, and uh, he was very interested in that. So to give us to give everyone kind of a picture, what which drone were you flying? Uh, the Phantom Four Pro version one. Mm, it's still a fantastic drone, as many of you know. Um, I actually know a lot of pilots who are trying to scoop one of those up right now, and they're having trouble finding them. Ah, well, I'm looking for a uh, Mavic 2 Pro. So oh, any, go. any any good uh, condition uh, Mavic 2 Pros out there, let's let's talk trade. Send, send an email, support <laughs> at thedroneu.com. Exactly. Or just post it in the uh, the DroneU community app. But So you were kind of getting in your takeoff sequence, and... This guy was kind of like, what are you doing, right? You're right. I mean, what did he, what, so help us understand what were the pre uh, flight motions you were going through and his kind of responses. Okay. So I'm just taking my drone out of the case like anyone else would, you know, setting it down on the landing pad and, uh, you know, hooking things up. And he's asking me these questions as I'm doing all this stuff. I'm thinking it's pretty normal by the book kind of stuff, you know, uh, A to B stuff. And he's just saying, well, why are you doing this? Why are you, uh, for example, why are you throwing that battery in so hard? You know, why are you, uh, uh, checking your props. Why are you, you know, spinning these motors? Uh, don't you just take off? And I said, well, no, you got to, you know, for, for one, it's cold. Today, is, it was a very cold evening. And so I'm just making sure my batteries are warm and I'm making sure they're seated into that drone and I'm clicking them in hard because that's one of the, the things that people sometimes don't do. Yeah. Um, so that's just one precaution I'm making sure I do. And just checking my props, it's just a standard kind of thing, looking for nicks and cuts in it, you know, and and spinning the motors, making sure they're spinning freely, no noise. It's just part of my typical pre-flight checklist. 
And he was asking why I was getting so detailed with it. Why, why wasn't I just taking off? Yeah, no, very, very interesting. And, and so I know here at Drone U, in fact, just filming Flight Mastery the other day, you know, I know you've known these rules for a long time, but you, you, you keep essentially seeing this frequency of the rules, the rules of takeoff, the rules of landing, et cetera. So you take off and you do your battery test and he was like flabbergasted, right? Right, right. So, so, I mean, what did he say when you're sitting there doing the battery test? Well, he, <clears throat> I bring up the drone and I, um, I push forward and I just jam the stick up and I'm looking at my battery voltage and uh, he's sitting there going, well, what are you, what are you looking at now? You know, mm. why are you flying so aggressively right now? I said, well, I'm checking my battery voltage because it's the really only one true test that you can do um, to uh, really know the uh, condition of that battery at that time and whether or not it's, it's safe enough to fly. And uh, you have to jam it. That's what you have to do to get the true battery voltage. And he says, oh, I had no idea. I thought you just kind of put a battery in and you flew. And I went, well, that's what I used to think too. <laughs> I, now, obviously I didn't, I mean, not obviously, but fortunately I never really had a crash because of battery voltage or anything like that. But it's a lesson that was taught to me. And I thought all this time that percentage was the way to go, mm -hmm. you know, because in your app, you set your return to home percentage. Um, your emergency return to home percentage, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought that that's what we had uh, as far as safety. You know, we had all that time, you mm -hmm. know, whatever, but it's not true, you know, because of the, the weather conditions and things like yeah, that. Yeah, those, that battery percentage isn't right. accounting for temperature, elevation. Elevation, exactly. Um, and that's just kind of stuff I've picked up through working here at Drone U through, I guess you would call osmosis because <laughs> I'm also the editor and I all, you know, I, I hear, I see all this information, yeah. you know, and it comes through. Yeah. So. And so before Drone U though, you, you were learning a lot through YouTube. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. YouTube was my go-to media source. I think, uh, just like a lot of people, yeah. you know, uh, but I originally learned through a friend of mine, uh, who let me just fly. Uh, he kind of gave me the basics and I, you know, I caught on pretty quick and uh, just kind of got the feel for flying the drone. But, you know, that's will only take you so far, you know, and then if you're going to do anything more complex, you kind of have to know why you're doing these certain things as opposed to just what to do, you know, so you can understand, in my opinion, it's just more valuable to really understand why you're doing these moves or you're doing these precautions as well, taking these precautions. So would you say that on YouTube, you didn't maybe get the depth that you're kind of seeing here at Drone You? Right. They kind of give you the A to B, but they don't really give you the why. And that's the kind of person I am. I like to know why I'm doing something as well so that I can dive deeper into mm. the understanding of it mm. and um, come to a more useful conclusion in regards to why these things are important, you know, uh, not just someone telling me, it's, you know, it's, it kind of goes back to the old, do what I say, not what I do kind of thing. Yeah, well, I yeah. want to know why you're saying that, yeah, you know, yeah. so I can fully understand, you know, the dynamics of this, yeah, you know, that 100%. kind of thing. So, but, um, so, I mean, when it, you know, kind of getting back to this story, uh, you, you take, you take off and you told me in pre-show that you were kind of doing some figure eights and whatnot. Mm-hmm just kind of practicing those banking turns. Right. And so, you know, you had also mentioned that uh, when you, you essentially were finished with the flight and you bring the drone in and you did a hand catch. Is that right? That's right. And so he was really, if I remember the story right, uh, he was essentially really interested in, you know, how you were controlling the orientation before you brought it back. Right. And the way that you were doing your turns. And I mean, how did you explain the importance of, of that to him? Because you said he kind of had no idea. Yeah, that's right. He was, he was actually having problems with his orientation, you know, and uh, he would bring the helicopter back to him facing forward. And so his orientation was off. It was reversed, yeah, yeah, it was reversed. I said, well, what I will typically do is when I'm coming in for a landing, I'm doing, I'm doing three things. I'm determining how I'm going to land this thing. I'm turning it around so I have the same orientation as the drone. And I'm also descending at an angle so that I'm not getting caught in a prop wash or anything like that. He says, well, 
as far as your orientation, how do you do that? I say, well, you get about 100 feet out and you just give it a 180 so that it's facing out. So you're facing, you know, you got the same orientation. Now your sticks are going to go right. It's going to come right. You know, you're coming back. It's going to come back. Everything is just the same. And it's the safest way to to land that and drone. And he had never really done that before? N- not really. He was just kind of, he didn't really, it was so simple. He goes, oh my gosh, why didn't I just turn my helicopter around? And I said, well, I don't know why. I think it's, you know, but. No, yeah, to his defense, I didn't even think of that, you know, until, you know, joining up and listening to what the crash, the don't crash course and, you know, what you had to say about a lot of this stuff. And it it made total sense. I mean, it's just one of those V8 moments where you just kind of pound yourself in the head and go, I should have known that. V8 moments. I love that. <laughs> well, I mean, and you just kind of covered a bunch of different rules that we teach throughout operations, don't crash right. and flight mastery, you know, never fly straight down, mm-hmm. uh, you know, always have the same orientation upon landing, following those rules of landing, rules of, uh, of takeoff. And, you know, before I know you're really helping us toot the uh, drone you horn here, but this is not just because you work here. No. Right? I mean, because you wanted to say, hey, I really want to make sure that we get it out, that I'm not just sitting here trying to brown nose uh, you and Rob. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You know? (laughs) I mean, what else? You know, when you work somewhere that teaches you how to fly your drone, you're obviously going to pick up stuff. You know, there's, it's just, it doesn't matter if I'm working for some other company. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm going to learn stuff. I'm going to soak stuff in. So yeah, that's, that's incredibly true. What you just said in regards to what I knew before drone you and what I know now. And so one of those things that I have seen in, in essentially your evolution is this unwavering confidence that you have now. And this ability to do some really cool, complex stuff. Like we've done B-roll together. We've done air-to-airs together. And and I'm not the easiest person to do air-to-airs with. <laughs> because I'm, wait, Steve, hold on. Consistent speed. Uh, <laughs> so, you're easier than you think. You well, know? <laughs> um, but but that said, I mean, where, where would you say this confidence kind of came from? Just doing it. Just yeah. doing it. You know, just knowing the rules. It's really helpful to be able to pull out a secondary phone and look at the resource page in regards to the trainings, the online trainings, because there are a number of different cinematic moves Mm -hmm. that I like to get good at and practice. And that's more of the drone pilot I am. That's more of the drone kind of drone pilot I am. I'm more of a cinematic flyer. I like to get those nice smooth shots with those, those banking shots, you know, with those nice smooth cinematic looks. And, you know, put music to those later. You know, that's just the kind of flyer I like to be. And uh, having that phone and watching you on those moves, you know, teaching step by step where the sticks go, what to look for, that kind of thing, it really helps out. And so really the confidence comes from just doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And then I'll even put a card in the drone and I'll record my moves so that when I get back to the house, I'll throw that in the computer and take a look at my progress. You yeah. know, and if it's a little jerky on some of the yaws or the turns, I just go back and I go, okay, well, we'll just do this again. You Was know? that something that you had kind of picked up while you were here? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I know I know Definitely. You, you've gone through a lot of, of new courses recently, you know, just finished the uh, uh, Mavic Air 2S or Air 2 don't crash course. We're working on the wedding course right now. You just finished the autonomy and business scaling course. Like you've worked on a lot of stuff this year and uh, you've, you've really become kind of intimate with the content. And, and that's really the story that I wanted to, to show here today was that like, here is Steve who, who essentially had gone through trainings and YouTube courses and whatnot, but maybe didn't have the rules of landing, the thumbs up buttercup rule, the not flying straight down rule, the orientation rules. Cause that's where most people do crash is, mm-hmm. is that orientation stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just trying to showcase, you know, how your role here has kind of shaped your flying. Well, I've got a huge advantage over a lot of people because I do work for Drone You, and mm-hmm. I do get to see this content across my desk and and look at it eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, you know, <laughs> 14 hours a day. Yeah, well, you know? right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, for me, it's a huge benefit to be able to see it and, and then 
practice it. Mm -hmm. And then these guys, I mean, you guys also give me the opportunity to go out and the field is right across the street, yeah. you know? So you give me the freedom to go out and, and practice this stuff, you know, when I have a little bit of time. And um, it's, you know, it's great. Would you would you say that the things that like you've learned from us and the content you've produced and whatnot, do you adamantly, ardently, and honestly believe that other pilots can gain confidence and reduce risk from the things that you've learned here, but also produce here? I would say yes, but they just have to take the time to look through the whole course and soak it all in and practice it. You know, a lot of people these days are YouTube generation, you know, and they just don't have these super, they don't have attention spans. They don't have the patience. They don't have the patience. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, when you look at a drone you course, there's a lot of detail in it, you know, and there's a lot of great information that if you skip over it, you're not going to learn, yeah. you know, but then you have to take that information and then go out and put it into practical use too. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing right now. And, um, before drone you, it was just launch the drone. I don't know what a battery test is. Mm. You know, I don't know, um, why I'm doing this. I don't, you know, a lot, there's a lot of rules and regulations and the 107, uh, course is excellent. There's a lot of rules about that and flying in different areas that I didn't know. I mean, I feel like a hundred percent, like I've grown a hundred percent since joining oh, Drone wow. U in regards to the content. Yeah. Because I mean, it's, it's so easy to sit there and look at, and then for me, like I said, I'm a detail oriented person. So I like to soak it all in and ask why questions and things, you know, why is this, why is this? And, you know, you and Rob have given me so much you know, so many great answers. Let me ask you this question, sure. Steve. Yeah, so go ahead. you, you, I mean, you fly outside of drone you and whatnot, and you talked about the, the cinematic stuff that you do. Mm -hmm. One of, uh, I got two questions for you and, sure. and one of them is, uh, well, one of them's hypothetical, but my two questions are is one, what is the drone that you're most excited for that's, that's coming? And then two, I want to talk to you about like absolute must have accessories and maybe you've picked up here maybe you haven't doesn't really matter but kind of coming from the horse's mouth and representing other drone pilots uh and we'll get to this secondary but essentially the accessories that have helped you out the most but before we get to that uh -huh. you know the mavic 3 just came out yes uh there's a lot of american drones coming out uh like the free fly astro is now out uh very expensive sony air peak supposedly coming out Autel's drone, you finally got to, you flew, I'm not sure if you flew, but you got to see it fly, mm -hmm. the Autel Evo 2 Dual Enterprise. Yes. What did you think about that one? That one is what I've had my eye on uh, primarily. Really? As far as American-made drones. Ah, well. Yeah. And um, I was big into Skydio. I was really interested in Skydio, but there are a couple of things that with those guys that I just, that kind of turned me off <laughs> and turned me towards uh, more towards the Autel. Did I influence the Skydio no, stuff? No, no. I mean, just research. Because that's what I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, well, if you work with <laughs> Paul. You know, <laughs> so. No, John uh, Wakey influenced that. <laughs> oh, John. Uh-oh, John. I do find it funny that literally a week after they leave, that drone shows up. <laughs> so, Because they were all about, we got to get this course in public safety. Safety ball or this drone in public safety, and then boom, magically shows up a week later. But um, you How know, did that it, happen? even with the new autels, though, B and H says you can't even buy them until 2022. Yeah, and I mean, with with everything that you know about these new drones, what's the most exciting drone that you want to get your hands on? Well, the autel first, and then probably Mavic Three would be the second, a close second. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm more into the. Uh, Cinematic stuff. So, um, you know, the the 5.4K and the 5.1K excite me, you know. I don't have enough money to <laughs> buy the $5.1,000. <laughs> Is this where Steve asked for a raise on the podcast? Yeah. Oh, man. So I was getting to that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I had, so hmm. the lead up was on me. Hey, Paul, that's a you. nice vest you're wearing there, you know. It really compliments you. Yeah, that's really oh, great thanks. there. Yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> So uh, as we like to say around the office, grateful for you, Steve. Yeah, GFY. So, so, um, but uh, okay, so let's get into accessories. So being here at Drone you, you've probably seen the gamut of accessories because people send us stuff all the time. 
And I think a lot of people who know Drone You and know Drone You very well uh, know that we don't really put videos out on every accessory that we get because that is a personal choice on my part that I don't like to put information out on things that we don't actually use or we don't believe in, you know? And so one of the few companies that we really believe in is Colorado drone chargers, right? Yeah. yeah. And those quad chargers they uh -huh. put out and, and they are now sponsoring uh, the props public safety program. We just got the M2 EDA charger in. I, I just, I have to say quick shout out to Colorado drone chargers because charging four Mavic two batteries in 45 to 50 minutes was unbelievably awesome. <laughs> so, um, but that said, uh, accessories must haves in your eyes, what do you believe are must have accessories for drone pilots? I would say GPC backpacks. Ah, oh my God. I'm a big fan of those. And, um, I became a big fan because I had a hard case mm -hmm. with the laser cutouts and, uh, I I thought that was the bee's knees right there for forever, but then it got really hard to carry and I couldn't really go too many places. I like to hike and get on trails and stuff like that. And it was just a pain in the butt to carry this thing all over the place. So Paul turned, you, you turned me on to GPC, you know, backpacks and I never went back. I bought one for my Mav 2 and I, I love it. You know, it's nice and small. Mm -hmm. It's got the laser cutouts. Everything has a place to go. Super easy to carry around. Oh, it, I love I'm them. a big guy and those straps fit me. You know, they, they fit around my gut. I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, so I'm quite comfortable hiking with that tiny little backpack. So now I'm looking for one for the P4P. Ah, uh, yeah, that's one of yeah. one of my favorite backpacks, and they're typically sold out of those. Um, I think they have them in stock, but oh, okay. they're typically, I mean, they sell out of those backpacks fast. I dig those things. It they're took nice. me a while to get my hands on one, <laughs> believe it or not, but thank you, uh, Rick and Beth, for your help. And, you know, we even got, I think Rob has it, because I haven't seen it here uh, this morning, but the Mavic 2 Air backpack. Oh. That seems to be Rob's go-to backpack now. Really? Oh, he. I he, haven't even put my eyes on that yet. I think he uh, commandeered the uh, <laughs> Mavic to for research air. purposes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but okay. Besides backpacks, what other accessories do you feel like are absolute must-haves? Colorado drone chargers. That quad charger. You know, I mean, if you're out in the field and you need power now, I mean, just the speed of that thing, the charge rate yeah. is just incredible, you know? I um, agree. And the typical charger that comes with the drones, no matter what, they're just those, you know, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. Sequential. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those sequential chargers, and they just take forever. Oh, especially you know? on the Mavic 2s. E yeah. I've had batteries charged for six hours, and I'm like, okay, I can't do this. Like, yeah, I got to do them overnight, ugh. you know, before the shoot. Oh, that is, it's painful. Right. Okay, but so we've talked about chargers. And let me ask you this, just for, for sponsorship sake, you're not saying Colorado drone chargers just because I'm saying that, right? No. Okay, cool, no. cool, cool. No. It's because you've seen them work in the field yes. and you see it. Yes. Yeah. And I've seen them side by side with other people who've come out to fly and they've got their standard charger. And when I say standard, I mean the one that comes with the drone. Mm -hmm. And then the Colorado drone charger, the, the quad charger, and people are just, you know, picking batteries. I mean, you, you, you see when someone puts one on here and then you see one put on the Colorado dr drone charger and it's just, this guy's taking his off pretty damn quick. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it's a, it's an incredible difference in time. It really is. You know, and the fact that they charge all at one time is what appeals to me. Yeah. You know, no, so. they've gotten better too, because I know on the old i2 chargers, sometimes they wouldn't do a balance charge, but now, now they do. And I love that. I absolutely love that. And for me, I mean, it's really helped me, uh, as you know, how many batteries we have, uh, <laughs> it's helped me manage my batteries a lot better. And actually that brings up a good point. If you remember flight mastery last week, remember I I took off to show everyone how to fly the obstacle course. And what happened to me? I did the battery test. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. And uh, literally voltage was at like three, four, five. I mean, so, I mean, the battery test, whether you're new or old, if you're not doing it, the chances of you running into a problem, I feel like only increase in time, mm -hmm. you know, oh, like yeah. if you're not doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. So yep. I know I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Okay. Any other accessories? Absolute must haves. Um, I would say the smart controller. Really? Yes, because uh, now I didn't think I was going to like it as much as, as uh, like, say, the uh, Crystal Sky. Uh, that is sort of an old hat uh, accessory I know right now. And a lot of people are selling those things to get their hands on smart controllers or other displays. But I just love the way that smart controller feels in my hands. It feels mm. solid. Mm -hmm. It's heavy. 
you know? So, you know what they say, if it's heavy, it's, it's expensive. It's uh, good. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, it, the, but um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like just a standard old plastic, you know, uh, controller because those sticks on those smaller drones, they're not as tall as the um, P2Ps, mm -hmm. right? So you kind of get more stiffness in those. Yeah, but when you have point. a when you have a heavier controller, in my opinion, it feels more equal. You yeah, know, it, it balances out, and the screen is bright enough. I I had no idea it was going to be as bright as it was. Yeah, you know, so I dig those. You know? And you know, you bring up a good point too about weight because the smart controller is lighter than say something like an Inspire Two remote with okay. the Crystal Sky on it. You know, that's pretty heavy. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. but that's a that's a very interesting point too because I remember when we were filming the wedding course with Kara, mm -hmm. and she was talking about, oh, you know, it's time for me to get a new drone. I've had this one for a few years blah, 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 blah. And I showed her, I think we had just gotten the Mini 2 in and she goes, oh, I wouldn't fly this. And I was like, what? <laughs> Kara, what? Like, what are you talking about? And she's like, there's no display on the remote. I like having a display yeah, yes. on my remote. I don't yeah. always want to have to use my phone. Mm -hmm. So I think she's in the the smart controller uh, camp as well. Because I remember we showed that to her and she was like, oh, yeah. Like, you, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. you know, maybe not as deep in the in the in, the, in her speech. But <laughs> did maybe, she fly with the smart controller? I don't did know. Do I don't I don't remember. OK, I want to say yes, but I don't okay. remember. OK. So. I, I agree with her because that display is also way bigger too. Mm -hmm. Is it a 5.5 or a 7? I think so, yeah. Okay. I think, I think so. I, I like the integrated display as well. Yeah. I, I do. I just like having one unit that you can pull out of that backpack, turn on, pair up, and you're ready to go. You know, wires and phones. I mean, that's all fine, you know, but I just... Myself, I prefer that integrated display. Yeah, it also yeah. makes it easier when you're mm -hmm. flying in controlled airspace and you got to have your uh, your phone ready to go. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, first of all, I appreciate you coming on the show, but hey. I've got a couple more questions for you. So okay. you mentioned you use a landing pad. Yes. Uh, uh, is it really working for you? You really enjoying it? I do. I, I do hand catch a lot, but when I launch, I like to have that landing pad. Um because it, it just gives me something to, uh, you, you know, and it's the big one. I use the big one, even if I have a smaller Mavic drone, mm -hmm. because I believe in a wide circumference. I just, I hate that dust blowing up, mm -hmm. rocks, anything like that. And uh, the, P, uh, the P4 the p is just, it's crazy for that. So, yeah, I have to have a large landing pad. And like I was saying before, I do a lot of hiking and shooting or drone flying out in sort of the wilderness area. So it's just a lot of dirt, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. If I don't have a flat surface um, and, a, and a landing pad to help out with that, during my compass calibration, that camera gets stuck, mm. you know? And so I have to have something to kind of spread out on a surface so that, that when, my, when I power up the drone and that camera does its compass cal, it doesn't get stuck yeah. on the ground or anything like that. It happens in grass a lot. Yeah, yeah the know. gimbal calibration. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I, I totally get that. Do you use a lot of ND filters by chance? I Yeah, I have a, a 16, an a ND16 that I typically use for most, um, most of my flights. Mm -hmm. On the M2... Um, I used a, I tried one of those um, adjustable ones. And? You know, it worked fine. Um, it was stiff enough to stay in the position. I thought that over time it was going to loosen up mm -hmm. and it would slip into some other position or something like that. But, you know, I was I was happy with it. Who makes that uh, adjustable one? You oh, remember? gosh. I'd have to look. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. So you don't have a preferred brand for ND filters? I don't. No. Okay. No. I had been kind of just going off. Um, now, that's one thing I will go to YouTube for because uh, if I see a lot of people using one brand, it's usually – a good one. Mm. There's usually a reason for it. Mm. Um, I won't basically just go off numbers, but I'll just listen to a lot of those videos and see what they actually like about that. Yeah. So, um, well, I know because the Polar Pro is a big one. Yeah. That's, and that's what I like. Okay. And I was actually just going to say, you know, with the Mavic 3, DJI continues to just consume their environment of, of accessory dealers and whatnot. And the example is the Mavic 3 comes with its own 
uh, its own filters, you know? Oh, I didn't know that. And, uh, well, one thing that I want to test is the Polar Pro filters against those because I have to say Polar Pro filters, for me, I find greater color depth and I also find more durability. Hmm. So whenever I've used the DJI filters, other than the X7, I've just found they they get scratched easier. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm a little rough around the edges, as all of you know. Uh, But uh, (laughs) I I prefer the Polar Pros myself. So, but this, but they're not sponsoring the show. They're just that's what we use. Well, I find also that when you have a a a third party entity creating something, uh, they'll usually put more care and engineering into it as opposed to a company that's doing uh, several different things. You know, um, if they're building something here and here and here, and then they throw in this, Mm -hmm. it's usually a little, I don't know, this is just my experience. It's usually like um, they're they're putting attention into a lot of different things instead of putting attention into one thing. Mm. And and that's why I kind of like Polar Pro is because they're just neutral density filters and lenses. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So they they're they're targeted towards that. Yeah. And I'll usually go and buy from a third party based on that right there. Even if it costs a little more. I know I'm gonna get a bit better result, you know. So Well, Steve, um, here's my uh my last question for you. Mm-hmm. Uh and here comes the hard one. Uh one we didn't <laughs> talk about in pre-show. But let me ask you this. How much of a raise do I want? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's just why I like Steve. He doesn't mind pre- pushing back. So um but uh no, I, I think my question is um what do you think is the hardest thing for drone pilots to overcome? Fear, the shakes, um, uncertainty, Mm. panic, you know? Do you feel like the things that you have learned here have helped with that? Yeah, definitely. Because I know why they help Mm. as opposed to just a a list of rules. Mm -hmm. You know, remember this, remember this, remember this, remember this. There's reasons behind those rules Mm -hmm. and, and what they actually do in, in a situation, you know, how the drone will react, you know, how a controller will react, um, you know, that kind of thing. So that right there helps tremendously with my confidence, knowing the why mm. behind all that stuff. Well, you know? that's, good to, that's good to know, especially uh, as we try to, you know, engage and help other drone pilots and whatnot get get through the learning curve because it's a it's a significant learning curve. Yeah. I would actually argue that the only learning curve that I have found that's more difficult is Bitcoin mining. <laughs> 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 Holy cow! <laughs> oh man! So oh my gosh! Well, there's enough cards in that <laughs> setup you've got right now to. I don't know what. You should be rich by now. What the heck? Yeah, not yet. 2700, uh, 3060s, yeah, 3080s. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, I mean, it, I mean, learning drones, it is a long learning curve. And I feel like, you know, even as I got more and more confident, uh, even this last year, I realized that you still have to keep learning whether mm-hmm. it's like the another tool in the in the toolbox or another cool thing to learn with your drone you've got to like essentially keep learning mm-hmm. would you agree with that I, I do agree with that and also another important thing is to is to take things in chunks mm. you know don't try to get onto a website and you know watch this whole video and take it all in don't try to take it all in at once take it in chunks mm. you know because usually when you learn one move, it's going to then solidify that confidence for the next move because yeah. that next move usually has something to that relates to that first move, yeah. you know? And so I think it's very important to approach it in that mindset. You know, you're not going to learn everything in one day, you know, and, and, and get out there and just fly the thing, yeah. you know? I mean, be safe about it. Get your fingers used to the controls and the feel, you know, that kind of thing. But do it in chunks. Maybe one day fly the drone. Maybe the second day look through the menu and, and kind of see what the menu things do, you know. Get familiar with the internal um, workings of the app. Yeah. Um, so you can relate those to the actual physical flying. Uh, take it in chunks. Yeah, and no, I know? think that's good advice. Uh, I think that's very good advice because I think a lot of people don't take it in chunks and mm-hmm. a lot of people, you know, kind of just like run into it, like uh, yeah. kind of like uh, <laughs> one of our students running into one of the gates last week. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you remember that? Yeah. 
Yeah. So I think that I wish I could yeah. literally have that on camera because oh, we ev do. every time that hap well, that's good. <laughs> every time uh, that happens, it's one of my favorite points in flight mastery is when someone crashes because you watch their ego drop like a rock, their humility skyrocket. And most of the times they want to be like done for the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. even with that student, he was like, okay, I'm uh, that. Yeah, okay. And it's like, no, 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 no. We have a rule here. If <laughs> you crash on the obstacle course, you can't leave until you complete the obstacle course. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, and yeah. you remember how he walked away after he finished it? Mm -hmm. He was like, and then he just kept doing it over and mm -hmm. over again. And he got yeah. the fastest time in the group. Like, yeah. that's the confidence transition that I like to see. Right. Because what do you say? You say, once you crash... It's you, that's behind you. It's water under the bridge. Is exactly now you can you can fly the course. Exactly, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. And that's that's so true. Oh my gosh, I think people are really afraid of crashing because they think that this fifteen hundred dro dollar drone that they have is going to be uh, a paperweight after a crash. Well, depending on how bad the crash is, it could be. Mm -hmm. But you should not fear learning your drone based off your, your, the fact that you might crash, you're going to crash, yeah. you know, and, and once you get that crash out of the way, then it's, you know, it's from there, it's a little easier because he took that obstacle course and he flew through that thing. He ripped and through it. beat that other guy's time. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. I mean, it was, it was incredible. I gave him a landing pad for effort. <laughs> So uh, it, was, it wasn't an appreciation trophy. It was just, uh, uh, it was a, you know, good job pouring, pouring your heart in the field. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, getting up and doing it again instead exactly. of just taking your toy home and walking away. Exactly. You know? A lot of people might do that. Well, I know he was also, because uh, that particular student at the beginning of the day, he was like, well, why can't I fly one of my drones that I brought here? And I'm like, well, you can, <laughs> but as soon as you crash that into one of the obstacles or the gates or the flags or the towers or any of that, it's a paperweight for sure. Yes. You know, it's <laughs> right. like, just fly one of the burner drones. We call them burner drones for a reason. Yeah. And I will never forget the look on his face when we literally brought the drone, the crash drone back over, threw it on the landing pad, you know, did a quick cow with it and took it right back off and it was fine. And he was just like, that's why I didn't fly my drone. It's like, <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what yes. I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, oh my gosh. It, it's always funny, the problems of the that repeat with students. So, yeah. but it makes it easy and fun to do flight mastery. You just got to get out and do it. That's all. You know, you can learn all you want, but every drone pilot that I've run into, including you, mm -hmm. have been on the same page with that one statement. You just got to get out there and fly. Yeah. You don't have to fly expertly. You just, you know, if you want to go slow, you go slow. If you, you want to, you know, fly casually, fly casually, you know, I mean, just, it's just doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's going to increase that confidence. Yeah. I know that's the way it was with me. You know, no, so. I think that's great. And I think a lot of people need to need to hear that. And so uh, also for Black Friday, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are discounts on in-person training. We've got in-person trainings booked for the next six months. So you can come out to HQ while it's still here and uh, and attend Flight Master. I promise it will not be like anything else that's offered uh, in the entire country. And I can say that from confidence and experience. Um, but that said, Steve, thank you so much for joining me today. You bet. Thanks for asking me. Yeah, 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 for it sure. Awesome. I mean, I think that I think really uh, your perception is uh, is really valuable to a lot of people of, you know, what really works, what is the real depth of drone you, et cetera. And I think to have you on the show and, and kind of come from an objective standpoint, because even if you talked crap about it the whole time, you, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't change your resignation date or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> So. Maybe by two days. Uh, 48 hours. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, but Steve, thank you very much. You bet. Appreciate it. You and, bet. And to all of you, thank you again for uh, listening, watching, and don't forget to leave us a review. And check out the Black Friday deal. And uh, if you become an annual member, you'll get one of these new cups. To remind you... Thumbs up, Buttercup, because you, <laughs> you can't hit anything if you fly over it. So that's going to do it for us today. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.